everybody, and welcome again to a Thursday night thought session. Of course, I am Mary Nafua, your lifestyle alchemist of mindset and money mastery, here to conduct you through uncharted territory as your transformation engineer. Thank you so much for joining us here for the Thursday night thought session here on Exponential Existence. Those of you that have seen us for the first time, just want to invite you in to go ahead and invite a friend, tell a friend, sit back, relax, and get an opportunity for you to learn more about what we do here at Exponential Existence. We are a transformation engineering company that is serving men and women across the globe, actually, to improve their thoughts, improve their patterns, recreate and transmute some thoughts and beliefs so they can become more aligned with the things of their desire to have in their life. So thank you all for joining me here on tonight. We are here every Thursday night live here to serve you out of our wealthy place and pocket. Absolutely positively. All right. So everyone, um, for those of you that have been listening and following us for a while, I want to remind you that we do have a new website. I'm not sure if you got the information, but we do have a new website. You want to go over there and check it out. Send us some feedback. Let us know all about it and get yourself engaged in our um at our new website. It's a great opportunity for you to stay connected. If you have not done so already, go ahead and get connected and find yourself as an opportunity to join us on a regular basis. That's where you're gonna get the most information and that's how you're gonna contact us the most. So I wanna thank you again for joining us. If you are coming in, thank you so much for coming in on tonight. We are simultaneously broadcasting um, also here as well as on uh, Periscope. So I want to thank everybody for being a part of that. And so we're going to keep moving on and keep being forward, moving forward to be able to, to address and handle all of our exponential existence issues. So again, that's exponentialexistence.com. Well, tonight, one of the things I wanted to be able to bring up and show for us tonight on the Thursday Thought with Mary and Afua is more than just telling you all about us. I really wanted to talk tonight about the power of the past. And this is going to be a twofold. And, and one of the reasons I wanted to know this a twofold is because when you are dealing with the past, many of us see it as a bad thing. Uh, we see it as a trap. It can be. We see it as a lesson. And it is. But it's also an opportunity for you to really begin to extend yourself into a greater level of knowing as far as who you are and where you want to go. Your past does not dictate your future it doesn't define who you are it has an influence to a certain degree because as we often hear and we've heard told and i think the first time that i really heard this put plainly i was listening to t hop eckert and he said nothing has meaning until you give it me nothing has meaning until you give it me so if you what you are holding on to you are giving a powerful amount of meaning to. You are giving it a whole lot of space and time to grow if you're nurturing it. If you are preventing yourself from experiencing the higher parts of who you are by the door open so that your past memories, your past experiences can begin to address you, then yeah, you're gonna end up in a situation where your past is trapping you, where your past is preventing you from other people experiencing your heart and your soul and your energy and your brilliance and your value and your worth. So if you're coming in right now and you're listening to this, even if you're listening on the replay, I'm inviting you. Yes, you. You. I'm inviting you to go ahead and input into the space just the words, I am great already i am great already just say that and mean it with all expectation with all knowing just say that i am great already that way if you begin to believe that you are great already you have no reason to doubt the possibilities all those possibilities that are coming your way i often tell people possibilities say yes to them say yes to the possibilities and the opportunities because it is the best and opportune time for you to begin to shine it is the best and opportune time for you to dig deep and allow yourself to become naked into your greatness. That's what I said, naked into your greatness. Not just into, not to fake it till you make it, but to be naked in your greatness. 
And by doing so, you're able to have a life that is filled with an expectancy of exponentiality. When I wrote the book, Not My Reality, back in 2008, it was simply just a way, didn't even know it was gonna be a book actually, but it was simply a way for me to invite people into a space. And that main person I was trying to invite into a space was me. I wanted to discover what it was like. Why were these 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 uploads coming to me? Why were why was I getting information about there's more? Why was I getting information about it's not my reality? Why did I get information about survival is my only option? Why did I get information that told me that you are the one you're waiting for? Now, of course, that one is an excerpt from Audrey Lord's poem. At some point we have to understand that our current existence is predicated upon us learning from the lessons in our past. As a child, we fell down numerous times. We moved too quickly and our feet got tangled. Or maybe we stepped in something we didn't want to step in, but either way, the past, which is simply just the previous moment, we've gained from it in some aspect. It's not meant to hold you upset and disengage you from the from the futuristic opportunities that are coming your way that are gonna further build you. So tonight I want you to take a journey with me and I want you to tell all those thoughts, all those memories that you no longer are gonna be bound by that. You no longer are going to extend yourself out into such a way that it prevents you from living a life that you desire, deserve, and want to create. It's all up to you. It's not left up to chance, it's left up to you. So if it's left up to you, you have nothing left to do except for to allow it to be. So that brings us into our focus that we always do. And as I said, every Thursday night we come together, we remind ourselves of a couple of mantras. So as you're coming in, be sure to tell me your city and state and what type of celebration you are having on tonight, your city and state, and what type of celebration you are having on tonight or you've experienced this week. It could even be this month. It could be the same one you gave me on last week. I don't even mind because there's never too much gratitude and too much celebration. Never, never, never. Now, here's our first mantra. I am the root of my success. If you believe that you are the root of your success, hashtag the words, I am the root of my success. Being the root of your success means that you understand that you own all the resources. You own the wisdom. You own the opportunity for you to begin to live a life that is filled with greatness, purpose, direction, wisdom, love, peace, intellectual stimulation. You're able to access opportunities and the resources that you need to grow because your success is all about you. So the moment you make a decision to have success, you commit to that decision, then you respect that commitment that you've made to that decision of success. And then you begin to expect and allow the results. Absolutely, positively, so it is because that's one of the things we have to remember to do. When we make a commitment, make a decision, commit to it, especially if it's part of your vision. Making, usually a decision looks like this. A decision means you have multiple options in which you can choose from versus just one. Because if you only have one option, that's not, that's not ability to make a decision. If you have two, you clearly have a dilemma because if you choose one or the other, you're uncertain. But the more options you have, three or more, allows you to clearly be able to weigh out. Take the time out and say, one, two, three, or four. And then choose what's best for you in that moment because there is no right or wrong. You are choosing the resources that you believe that your, your desires, your wants, your preferences, and the boundless amount of abundance and the unlimited amount of prosperity and remember that abundance and prosperity is not always about money. It's about having a space in which you're able to grow without inhibition, able to grow without any doubt, able to grow without any fears or frustration. That's what I said. Too many of us are just willing, willing to just kind of take the first thing because it's right there and we're moved by emotion. Let's negate some of the emotion. So that's our first mantra on tonight. Absolutely, positively, I am the root of my success. It is up to you. 
I think I remember some quote they used to say um, when I was teaching. Uh, for, teaching, I think maybe it was a record. It's, if it's up to, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. If it's meant to be, then it's up to me. That is very much so. You are in control of your destiny. You have to choose to make a decision and commit to that decision, allow that decision to play out so you can have it and you gotta respect it. Point blank, that's all there is. Those of you that are coming in, thanks so much for joining me here. We are here on the Thursday Night Thought Session. Of course, I am Mary Nafua here serving you on tonight on the Thursday Thought. As you come in, please share it out with a friend or two or three to come in and join that you believe can join from this message. Today, I'm going to be talking about simply about um, my experience in the airport. Uh, this is a very busy time in the airport, and I was traveling and I was taking my son to college. And one of the things that happened is that we kept getting these plane delays. And in getting these plane delays, um, it, it gave me some time to think. But before I even got to the delay or knew I was going to have a delay, I was coming through the security terminal. And I'm very personable. I speak to everyone and I'm listening and observing. It was early morning because I like early morning flights or late night flights. And one of the things that happened is that this woman was coming through the security line and she had a cup of coffee, iced coffee, whatever they make in the coffee shop. That's immediately out in the plaza right before you enter into the security gates. Now, mind you, she's walked all the way through. She's gotten up to the part where they're going to actually scan your ticket and your identification. So the woman tells her that she cannot bring that in. I went, hmm, okay. Gotcha. In the airport, it's immediately outside the security. She has access to it. She has the ability to purchase it. It's a small little insignificant thing, but it becomes a major thing when it's time to enter into the thing that she really wants, which is the boarding area. So I looked at that. That was my first reflective moment. The next reflective moment that I came across was when I was standing, went up a little further. I made it through with the identification and the ticket. I walked on the other side to begin to put my things into the basket and go through the TSA line. And I saw the sign and the sign simply said, remember 3.4 ounces of any liquid or personal care uh, product, 3.4 ounces or less. The larger items are not allowed. And I went, wow, that's something else. And I got to thinking about it. How can you care? What if you're traveling for a long period of time? Well, if you're traveling for a long period of time, they want you to check your bag. They want you to check your bag. So that incurs another expense. It incurs another expense, another chunk of your time because you have to go back and retrieve your bag. Or you lose that convenience. So there were two options that came to me that were shown to me in that very brief moment. The first one is that you can have access. We have all the things you enjoy. But when you come into, when you fall into line and you begin to move, there is a gatekeeper. And the gatekeeper is saying that you can't bring that in this area, not allowed. And once you get past that gatekeeper, they give you another constraint. You are not allowed to bring your comfort zone into our space, we're controlling that. And so I got to thinking about what that really means. And I jokingly said something like, you know, the airport system is uh, um, airport, American airport travel, international travel period, is really about their money. Y'all know how I talk, so it's really about their money. Because what they're saying to you is that this is their environment, this is their space, we're gonna give you access. We're gonna allow you to come in. Yeah, you pay the fee to be able to come in, but in order for you to really benefit from that initial investment and some of the little amenities, you're gonna to have to follow the process and the rules and regulations that exist within this space. I know. So like the woman, she paid her tickets, she got in, she was able to, to take part of the restaurant that was there, but it was not that, was not able to come into the space. To get to the next level, she had to let it go. She had to make a decision. Do I keep my coffee 
take the risk of not getting back through security in time? Or do I discard the coffee and then go through security and then purchase a new one on the other side after I've gotten access to what I want? Just stick with me for a minute. You'll catch it. So we go through this line and it tells us as we get to the other side, it says, hey, if you have anything that is larger than 3.4 ounces, then you need to discard it. You need to get rid of it. You need to get rid of the weight. You need to discard anything that's over 3.4 ounces. And if you have it in your bag, they're going to pull you over to the side and take your bag and they're going to go through your bag and they're going to ask you to release it, let it go. Okay. So I thought about that. How does that play out in our life? You know, because I'm always reflective. So when I got there, some of you saw the video I did on Saturday morning. It had you to look and acknowledge at the fact that I had just had this experience and this revelatory experience about this airline and how it relates back to business. But then as I further reflected after having this four and a half hour delay of my flight, I began to realize that's the way we need to be in our lives. It's wonderful for people to be put into our path. It is awesome for us to be part of social organizations. It is awesome for us to be able to attend events and, and socialize and network and join organizations and become part of groups, religious organizations. So that's the access. But when you come in there, they all expect you to contribute. And sometimes they say, I know when I go to a nightclub to hear jazz, sometimes they tell me, they say, oh, you can't bring in your own bottled water. I drink alkaline water. They don't offer alkaline water, but they tell me I can't have it. So if I want to hear live music, I have to leave my alkaline water in the car and just drink my glass of wine. Or I have to purchase their bottled water, which is not necessarily alkaline water. You see where I'm going with this? So there's the controls that are in place in every environment. So when we're joining these organizations, when we're entering into these social and personal relationships, we need to start looking at the realities of what type of expectations, what type of constraints are we placing on people once they get access to us and enter into our personal spaces and environments. This is including our businesses as well. And that means your social media pages, that means your events, that means your cell phone conversations, your physical place of business. So if you are going to have this experience and allow people into this space, what constraints are you putting in place to make it happen? When people come to that gate, they're welcome. Hey, how you doing? And then they come through your security line. What do you have in place? How are you filtering out people and letting them know that this space is very different from the space you may have left and that the value that's in this space, meaning yourself, meaning your services, meaning your business, meaning your family relationship is something that you value. So you need to set some things up in this path that kind of gives that buffer much like they did with the woman who had the coffee and say, hey, you cannot come past me with that coffee. When you get to the other side, there's another coffee shop inside, or you can get out of line and go finish your coffee and start over again, but you're not gonna go back in the space where you were at. You're gonna lose your space in line. Whoa, that just hit me. So if I'm going to allow people to have access, I need to have some boundaries, some borders, a framework by which they can function in and go forward in. So like that security line, she chose to go back and either dump it or I'm not sure what happened. And then like that next one, so like you got through the first part of security, once they meet that criteria on and they're getting past the first gatekeeper, there's a sign that tells us that we are limited on how much we can bring into this new space from the previous space, meaning your comfort zone. A lot of us want to join organizations, work with coaches, go to conferences, um, create these, these events and these opportunities only to find ourselves doing the same thing, having the same pattern, not changing our mindset. We move way across country, but do the same thing we were doing previously. 
told the sign that told all of us that if we had 3.4 ounces, larger than 3.4 ounces, that we needed to discard it because it's not allowed. It's not allowed. So some of us need to begin, all of us, hey there, all of us need to begin to put into place the reality that when people come past our gatekeeper, that we need to remind them that they cannot bring their baggage, their systems, their luggage, their burdens, and expect them to be allowed in this space. There requires there to be a shrinkage, ha, ah, a shrinkage to occur. So if you have some habits, if you have some processes, if you are if you are used to doing things a certain way, if it's always been this way, they're telling you, no, uh-uh. You might be used to spraying, uh, taking your Listerine or your mouthwash every, every four hours. They're telling you no. If you want that convenience, if you want that comfort, you're going to have to pay an extra fee. And that means you need to check, take the larger thing, put it in the suitcase and check your bag, which requires you to pay an additional fee. And that's what I got. That, that, that sign was representative of us saying to other people, you cannot bring your baggage. You cannot bring your fears. You cannot bring your frustrations. You cannot keep trying to do your same habits and expect a different experience and result. Or that I'm just going to accept them when actually you came to me because I have the thing you want. The airport is the thing we wanted. We want to go someplace else and they are the bridge to get us there. Your coach, your trainer, your teacher, your spiritual leader, they're all here serving. We're serving as a bridge to where you want to go. So if you are holding on to that space, it's time for some shrinking. So then I go to the next part, I leave that sign and they say, take out all your electronics and place them on the table into a bin, take off your shoes and walk through this detector. So what they're saying is, while I trust you enough to get past the gatekeeper, and I warned you that you have to reduce the amount of baggage and, and, and burdens and luggage and habits and inconsistencies. And, and uh, I'm, I trust that you understand and you read the sign, but now I'm gonna double check it. I'm gonna make sure you understand that you cannot come in here in your comfort zone, that I'm here to break through, that I'm here to expose you to a new level of experience and that we want you to enjoy this experience so much we don't want you to be consumed by what you need to leave behind. That was for someone in here today. When we are moving forward, when we are crossing a bridge, when we are breaking through, we have to be willing to let go and at least minimally begin to reduce the frequency of the thing you're doing does not bring you the results. If you want a quality relationship, you just can't keep going from one relationship to the next without figuring out what's happening because you are the denominating factor if you know that you keep going from paycheck to paycheck and you want it to stop you have to pause long enough to see what are you doing every time you get your paycheck that's preventing you from having the opportunity to allocate and create and grow your immediate funds that's what it's about so if we're going to look at that if you know that you want your business to grow, but the only time you do your business is when you're posting on social media, something cute, something quaint, something maybe profound, but then you don't follow up with the people who are liking and responding to your posts. You don't follow up to the people who are on your lives. You don't follow up and you don't go out here and actually talk to people about your business and you don't set up systems that allow you to serve your people that are interested whose pain points you're talking to, then it's for not. So the security TSA line to take off your shoes, we want to see it all. We want to reveal. We want to tell you this is new territory. This is a space for you that's designed for you to grow. Planting your feet, you are the root of your success, remember? So you're going to plant your feet into a new soil. It's going to begin to allow you to transfer. We're going to see if there's anything else that we need to get rid of that's going to prevent you from having this, this opportunity. So once you go through this process, they may do the scan or they may go through your bag and they may find something. And again, they ask you to discard it. 
They're going to investigate. And they're going to say whether you can go forward and enjoy the experience of going to where you want to be by boarding that plane, having even greater access meeting even more people who are also on the same level, the same quest to be bridged to a place where they want to go. Not being stagnant, not having conversations with people who are not certain if they really want to do it or not, or should they do it, or is it possible to do it? But these are people who are willing to do the action, to go ahead and do the shrinkage, to go ahead and leave behind the thing that's comfortable, to go ahead and allow themselves to be fully examined and positioned for their greatness. This is what I got out of traveling in an airport, going through the system, the Homeland Security system. It was to remind us that we too must also have a TSA sort of system when it comes to us bridging ourselves into what we want and what we desire. Instead of just thinking I can do it on my own, you cannot do it on your own. You cannot allow yourself to keep sitting back and staying in the same group of people who are only doing the same thing, but every now and then somebody pops up and says something different. It becomes imperative. That means very important that you dig deep and that you be willing to start shrinking down some of those habits and getting rid of some of those bags of luggage, getting rid of all those thoughts and patterns and beliefs and systems that are holding you back, that are training you up and tripping you up every time you get a chance. Those are known as paradigms. That is a system of beliefs and habits that we do subconsciously, not even aware of it, that prevents us from doing what we want to do. So when people come to me and they talk to me about wanting to have more, but yet you're doing the same thing, you're not willing to get rid of the thing that isn't allowed in this new space is going to help you grow. You're not willing to, you're not willing to shrink down the amount of chaos and memories and, and patterns and bull crap and just become, allow yourself to become exposed and dig deep into the resources and the possibilities and opportunities that are awaiting you so that you can take the bridge that you can transfer over, that you can begin to have the life that you desire. Because clearly, if you have the vision, it is meant for you to bring it to fruition. Remember, if it is to be, it is up to me. Why don't you type that in the room with those of you that are listening? Even when you hear this on the replay, I want you to type in the room. If it is to be, it is up to me. And I can't even recall who the person who initiated that. Because it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you understand that you control the power, the ability for you to have what you want. What are you willing to do in order to be on that bridge that's going to get you to what you want? Are you going to get frustrated? Are you saying there's too much work? Are you constantly finding things that are going to circumvent you? Are you going to pout? Are you going to just sit down and say, I'm not going to do it? All right, is that what you're going to do? Are you going to are you going to disengage yourself from the realities of your greatness? The greatness that lies within you. The life that is a part of you. Absolutely positively so it is. So when we are harnessing this, the message in this opportunity tonight is simply to get you to understand two things. Then when you make a decision, you have to be committed to it. And when you make that commitment to that decision, you have to be willing to respect it, meaning that you're saying that it is valid and needed in order for you to progress forward, in order for you to change the atmosphere, in order for you to gain some awareness, some truth, some purpose, some design, some guidance, share some love, share your wisdom, whatever you want, because if it is coming through you, it is for you. And then it is for you to deliver it and serve others with it. That bridging, I mean, being on that plane and then having turbulence and, and having to be redirected. It, it, I just got so much out of it. And you're going to hear more about it as we go forward. But I just want to deal with the fact that we have this protocol, this system that the Homeland Security has set up 
for safety purposes to ensure that all persons and personnel that are traveling domestically or internationally are able to arrive in their destination safely. That's exactly what they say. They say that because they understand that if you have all your basic needs met, if you remove, if you remove the possibilities of fear and frustration, if you remove all of the backstories, if you remove the chaos from your past, if you remove the connection to the thing that you're always running to when you feel uncertain, then you can go further on your journey to what you want to desire and how you want to contribute. Absolutely positive. That's the message that I have for you tonight. Go inside. Listen to yourself and ask yourself, what is that you want? What do you want? What is required of you to leave behind so you can get past the gatekeeper to what you want? And once you leave that thing behind, are you willing to commit to that? Are you willing to commit to it? And even though you may be uncertain, you're willing to go ahead and see that sign that says, hey, You've got too much baggage. You're holding on to too many false beliefs and misunderstandings and doubt and frustration and fear and worry and angst and resentment and competition with others. So we need you to shrink that down. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to get out the trays and lay out and expose all of these, all of these things to someone and some people that can support you and actually help you know how to eliminate them or transmute them into a more productive way by joining something, by being a part of, of a community, of a family that allows you the opportunity to grow. Because yes, you are the best thing growing. You are. So when you go through that and you begin to expose and you take off your shoes and you allow there to be an x-ray, hands up, and they x-ray you, and they do a little bit more inspection, they do a little bit more, and then they say, go forward. Are you going to pause and look back and wonder what it could be? Or are you going to look forward, grab hold, and start a conversation with someone else who just also came over that space? Oh, yeah, you're right, Christy. Remove the fear. Remove the idea of fear because fear is faith energy awaiting release. Faith energy. Faith and fear both require you to believe in something you have yet to see or experience. So I think it's best to have faith. Go ahead and go into you. Go ahead and ask you what it is you really want to do, have, contribute. The why will get you the how. And the how will deliver you the what. The why, the how will give you the what. But you got to be clear. You got to be clear. And so we began to talk about the possibilities of what that looks like in your life. What does it look like to be able to engage in such a way that allows you to have an internal gatekeeper, that allows you to begin to have a process, a process that allows you to evaluate the quantity that you need of stress? Because stress is a natural part of life. It shouldn't be debilitating. It shouldn't be destructive. It should be motivating. It should be complementary of the of the excitement and of that thing coming to fruition. The nervous butterflies that we get when we know we want to do well, not the anxiety and frustration that it's not supposed to be. Oh, wow, this is so good. Can you harness that? Can you harness that just for me? Harness that onto you. 
top of your head, wear it proudly. You want to move forward. You want to begin to reduce the frequency that you're exposing yourself to people, places, and ideologies that control and limit you from being the greatness and the vastness that you are. You want to begin to flow into the abundance. You want to begin to live and float on prosperity as prosperity. You want to begin to open up yourself to be the life force that is the renewing breath on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, on a cellular level. There is no hope. Hope is a byproduct or that middle ground, that microsecond middle ground when you make a decision. But you can't hope I pay my bills. You can't hope that I get some food. You can expect. You can create the space. You can go out and resource, uh, uh, access the resources. Search them, apply them so that you can do that thing that you want to do. I hope I can lose this 25 pounds before this. No, do it. A lot of folks are hoping and trying and nobody's really doing. I'm gonna say it again. Hoping and trying is done. It's time to do action. Action, action, action. And if we can do that, if we can get to that space, if we can get past the gatekeeper, if we can begin to do the shrinkage, if we can begin to allow ourselves to expose those parts of us that we are uncomfortable tapping into and addressing and get the resources we need, such as a coach, such as a mentor, such as an, at someone, a training program, such as maybe even a counselor or a therapist. I'm being honest, I'm being real. Get someone to help you allocate your money. Allow yourself to get away from the environments that are constantly giving you this unwanted, unproductive experience of stress. So that you can really unleash that greatness unapologetically without any indication or fear, frustration, worry, and doubt. Hashtag I'm ready. Hashtag I'm ready. If you're ready to go ahead and begin that process to set up your own personal homeland security, you are your first home. Are you willing to do that? Then say hashtag I'm ready. Hashtag I'm ready if you are ready to begin that process. And I know many of you will type it, but I want you to say it too. I'm ready. And then I want you to finish. What are you ready for? Say it out loud in your home. Say it right now in your car, wherever you are, in your office space. Yes. You have to be ready. And it's not about how much money you have. It's not about how much time, because we all have the same allotment. The question is, what are you going to do with that time? Someone sent me a thing and talked about um, the show called Power. More power to it. I love it. I, I even know some people that are involved with that. But that's not my journey. So if I take an hour out to watch Power so I can have conversations with people about power, instead of creating and utilizing my own personal power, my own professional power, my own um, mindset power, then I can't create that. I'm just saying, what are you doing with your time? If you have a job, I understand being a parallel entrepreneur. But when you have a parallel entrepreneur, you work your job, you take a couple of breaks and you work on your business. There are 24 hours in a day. So the first thing you say is how many hours do I need to sleep? Most people will say anywhere from five to seven hours of sleep is what they need. They need what you do. It's not what other people say you should have is what you need to function properly, to have the right type of thing. So the first thing is figure out how much time you need to sleep. Then you take the rest of that time and you divide it up between your job and your children or your spouse or whatever. And you put the rest into your business, but it has to be an equitable priority so that when you're focusing on your business, you're not trying to focus on your business and focus on your children and focus on the, on the other community obligations you have. When you're focused, I focus, I focus, I focus. That's our other mantra, right? I focus, I focus, I focus. Why do I say that? Because we have to learn how to be on one thing at one time and give it 100% of us so that we can limit the amount of mistakes, 
so that we are not caught in dilemmas and we're always able to make a decision. Yeah. Because if you have a nine to five or a seven to three or a one to whatever, or 11 to three, whatever your shift is, if you're doing it with quality and full out integrity, then you're going to make less mistakes. You're going to be recognized. You play, get an opportunity to, to get some additional perks that allow you to be able to further build into and pour into your business side. To pour into your community outreach. That's what it's about. But if you're not doing that, 100%. You got a family? Pre-cook your meals. Pre-cook your meal or pre-prep your meals. And take that time out to do it and take that time out to sit with your family. Take that time out to do the homework. But just know at some point you got to be able to focus 100% the same way on what it is you say you want. What do you want? Type it in. What's, give me one thing you want. Where do you want this bridge? Once you set up your personal homeland security system, what is it that you want? Be very specific. Be certain on what you put down. What is it that you want? What is it that you want for you? Because that's the only thing you can really guarantee for is you. Now, once you do it for you, others will benefit. But you first got to know what you want for you. Your children may be your why. Your church community may be your why. Your mosque may be your why. The larger community may be your why. Synagogue, whatever, right? But it's ultimately what you want to have for you. What do you want to happen for you is what we're asking for tonight. Once again, you are listening to the Thursday Thought with Mary Nafua here on Exponential Existence. We are here every Thursday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Truly, it's Arizona time because when time changes, we will still be at still at 8 o'clock p.m. Arizona time because we are our own time zone. You can find out more about me at exponentialexistence.com, exponentialexistence.com, where you'll have the opportunity for you to be a part of our family. We don't have a community. We do have community members, but we prefer for you to be a family member because, you know, family business is for family. So we're glad for you to be a part. So you can go ahead and get an opportunity to go to exponentialexistence.com forward slash connect and at that time you can send us a message and we will add you to our mailing list there you'll be able to have access to our monthly newsletter you'll be able to get discounted information about our upcoming programs and services as well as opportunities for you to sign up for our coaching our events and other services that we offer such as our exponential existence radio show and tv show All right, I see it in the room. I see you putting down to be carefree and comfortable. So then you better know what carefree and comfortable looks like for you. What does that mean? Write it out, not today, not tomorrow, but when you hang up in this call on today, I want you to write it down for yourself to know what carefree and comfortable means. And people try to make these, these, these elaborate things. Just be real, it's you. What is it, what is it for you? It's no judgment, no harm, no foul. I want to serve people and do this all day, every day, uninterrupted. I love flying. I love talking. I love sharing. That's what I want. So then it means I have to dedicate time to the things that are going to support that. Set up a homeland security system, a personal homeland security system that allows me to give people access to me. And then make my, after to get past the gatekeeper, make myself available to them so they can begin to transform. And once they expose themselves, I support them through that process. Absolutely positively. So set up your own personal homeland security system that allows you to draw onto you and attract onto you and set up the benefits and the rewards that you desire as you're taking the bridge to the next level. Everyone's not going to understand. You know, I hear people say, oh, you know, coaches are fake and Trainers are fake and people, no, it's not about them. It's about you. Remember that first, after you get through the gatekeeper, you got to shrink down. And what came to me was simply this, your comfort zone is not allowed in this zone of exponentiality. 
You have to be willing to change your comfort zone. Some of us are so used to it being hot all the time. I mean, super hot all the time. And that's the only way you think you can function instead of understanding that some days it needs to be boiling hot and some days it needs to be ice cool and some days it needs to be simply a warm, steady flow. That's balance. That's harmony. That's an exponential existence where you have focus and you can have fulfillment, not only in your business, but in your personal life. Those of you that are doing MLM marketing or direct marketing, you have to have balance. You need clarity. So set up your personal homeland security system for you, for your business, for your success, for your relationships with people. Allow people to have access, but you're not available to everyone. If they're coming through the gate with all of this hurt and misled intentions and um, the opportunity for you to, to have to fight over and over again, just no, that's not it. Everything aligns up at the appropriate time, but there has to be constraints and there has to be a removal, a transmutation that occurs. When you're traveling into untarted territory, there has to be an opportunity for you to sit back and see where you are, but yet not even be aware of where you're going. You're not to get distracted. You're not to get distracted. Stay focused. Allow it to be. Allow yourself to really embrace that moment of your, of your next level, that bridge to what you want. It's waiting for you and it's a possibility. And the only thing you have to do is connect with us at the exponential existence. That's all you have to do. Exponentialexistence.com. That's all. Forward slash connect. Questions, comments from you that are listening. Thank you for joining me here tonight on the Thursday Thought as we are wrapping up another Thursday night thought session. We are here every Thursday, 8 o'clock p.m. Arizona time, currently Pacific time zone, 11 o'clock on the East Coast. If you would like to be a guest on our show, we're going to start having guests coming in again on Thursdays starting in September. You're welcome to be a guest. Those of you that are looking for an opportunity to have more clarity, all you have to do is focus. Text the word FOCUS to 480-269-1038. Again, text the word FOCUS to the phone number 480-269-1038. If you text the word FOCUS to there, you'll have an opportunity to work with me personally. Allow me to be someone that's there, a resource that's available to you as you are exposing yourself, as you are in the process of doing the shrinkage on some of those beliefs, habits, and practices, and conversations that you need to shrink down. Allow me to support you for eight weeks. Allow me to assist you and to gain the true opportunity of what freedom is, what being carefree is, what removing the fear looks like, what looks like the ability to make a decision and commit to it and respect it and get the expected results. 480-269-1038 is the number you want to text the word FOCUS to so we can get started today. Thank you for joining us here on the Exponential Existence Radio. This is the Thursday Night Thought Session. Of course, I am your host, Marion Afua. Thank you so much for joining me on tonight. Please tell a friend and bring a friend. We're also going to be doing a live broadcast. Yes, I'm the Thunder and Lightning. Somebody just said they heard it on the other screen. But yeah, we do. It's Thunder and Lightning here. We are in our monsoon season, which is actually a season I love here in Arizona and anywhere, actually. I love it. Um, but it's a great opportunity. So I trust that tonight you begin to do your homeland, personal homeland security system to bridge you and you allow me to be a part of that. Again, just text 480-269-1038, the word FOCUS. And this can be this will be going on. We're going to start getting started and you'll become part of our clarity squared. You know, we're about exponents. Clarity squared. That means you're going to have clarity times clarity to equal more clarity. Clarity about your money, clarity about your mindset, clarity about your your finances. Clarity about how to create this personal homeland security system. That's what it's going to take for us to get to the next level. So thanks again for joining us here. We'll talk to you again real soon here on the Thursday Night Thought with Marion Ford.
Thanks so much for joining me. Talk to you soon.